So welcome back to another FIFA 23 video. Today we're talking about the things you should do in the game. These are basically going to be some game settings and just general things you need to go over. Now I know obviously many of you probably have the game already and I hope this video still helps you out but there's going to be people buying this game for Christmas, Black Friday, looking for the sales and into the next couple of months as well. So hopefully this video helps you out. Now if you enjoy the video please leave a like for me it always helps and make sure you subscribe for more FIFA 23 tips and tricks. The thing you should do in FIFA 23 is download the latest squads. This is going to be essential to your kickoff and career mode experience. Downloading the latest squads ensures that the latest transfers, player faces, and even player stats have been applied to your game. And then you can use the latest updates in career mode and kickoff mode. You can check here each week because EA always updates the squads. So every week there might be a new squad update. But basically you go to the edit teams, you check for the squad updates, and uh, should say download updates there. You click yes, and then it will start downloading the latest updates and applying it. Obviously, you can do this to get the player faces as well. Very, very important to do this before you even start playing career mode and kick off. If you want to reset the squads at any time, just go back to the settings, go to edit teams, and then go reset all squads. You can click yes, and it'll start doing it. Another thing you should do in FIFA 23 is adjust the gameplay sliders. This is essential as well for your gameplay experience. EA usually gives you, you know, the 50s for all the default gameplay settings, but sometimes they're not very good, you know. When things are on default, sometimes they're overpowered, unrealistic more arcade-like or just dodgy in general. So you might want to adjust these sliders here and it might make it better. Now my go-to place for the sliders is Operation Sports and Matt10L on Twitter. They've got a huge range of sliders available so you just need to test the things out, see what you like and then go with that. There's so many different sliders for the difficulties so you can do Legendary, Ultimate, Professional, even the amount of time your games are. There's different sliders for that as well. So there's so much testing going on at the moment and these guys do a great job and I think this year you're going to need the settings to make the gameplay better. Obviously if you don't want to use other people's stuff and you want to tinker with your own stuff you can always do that as well. You can just uh, move the numbers around, see what you like, see what works, see what doesn't. It might take more time to do it by yourself but you can still do it and you can also tinker the CPU stuff as well. It's all there and this is one of the best things about FIFA games because even if you don't like EA's default gameplay you can always change it yourself. Next up we have controller settings. This is also important because it affects your gameplay experience. If you don't know what to do here, you can always copy the Operation Sports sliders as well. On the bottom of that page there, there's some things for the controllers that you might want to try out. They offer realistic settings for your controllers, so just copy them, see what you like. And if you want to change them, you can always do them yourself at any time. Uh, there's different things here. EA does sort of explain it in the description. If you want assisted headers on or off, you can do that. Most of these things I think are on by default, so you might want to turn a few things off to make it a little bit less assisted, but ultimately it's up to you. Make sure you turn that FIFA trainer off, by the way, that's annoying. Even if you don't like the vibrations, you can go all the way down here and change your vibrations, so you can turn that off if it annoys you. And this one's another big one as well, the trigger effect. If you play on PS5 and the players get tired, you'll notice that when you sprint with R2, you're sort of battling the trigger button. It sort of um, has a bit of resistance. If you don't like that, like I don't, then just turn it off, you know? That's a good setting. And uh, there's also other things like save assistance, lob through passes, semi assistance for different things as well like shots and that, right stick switching. It's very complicated but you need to get your head around these things because this is basically the FIFA gameplay experience settings, you know. You need to tinker with this, see what you like and make your experience better tailored to what you like. It's all up to you. There's also other controller settings as well you might want to take a look at. So you can even customize basically the button layouts. So if you see that shoot is circle and you want to do square because maybe you play eFootball instead, you just click on it, swap it out, and there you go. If you want to do through ball as an X, you can do that as well. Basically, um, whatever you want here, you know, whatever you're used to, you can customize everything. Even the protect ball button, you can change that to an R2. You can sprint with L2. It's all customizable here. So this is good to know. You've also got the classic and alternate ones. Most people just pick one or the other. There's the two button one as well. But it's good to know that you can also customize it whenever you want if you're used to playing a different way. I don't know. Now also defense is the same thing. You can also customize the jockey buttons, the sprint buttons. There might be like a little hack where, you know, it's better to use a different button than what EA gives you. So maybe it's quicker to tackle with uh, X or something. I don't know. But, you know, tinker around, see what you like. You can also do the classic preset or the alternate one or the two button one as well. So it's all there. Now when I played FIFA 23, I started hearing noises coming out of my PS5 controller when the ball hit the back of the net, when the referee blew his whistle, and I was not a fan of it. It just sounds a little bit cheap, a little bit annoying as well for me. So if you want to turn that off, just go to the audio game settings and just slide it down to zero. 
The audio game settings can be found under the game setting tile. Another thing you should do in FIFA 23 is take a look at your game settings. So in the settings now you can do 3 minute half lengths, you can do 4, 5, all the way up to about 20 minutes. I usually use about 3 to 5 minutes depending on how I feel. Of course the difficulty is another thing you should set up as well. If you want to play on harder difficulties you can go legendary. There is ultimate difficulty in career mode settings as well. Competitor mode on or off you need to decide if you like it or not. I don't really like it most of the time so I leave it off. Player based difficulty is something that I turn on most of the time. Sometimes I turn it off. But you got to see if you like it as well. These are two settings that you just need to try out. Another thing people play with is the game speed. So if you like faster paced action, turn that up. If you like slower paced, turn it down. But most people leave it on default as well, which is not too bad, but it's a little bit slower this year, I would say. You've got quick subs as well. And then there's also the camera angles as well. So if you play on next gen, you'll get game cam, but you can also change to whatever you like there. Uh, visual as well. There's different things. I usually put the player names on top of the heads because I commentate but you can leave the indicators or numbers as well. There's other settings here like hold to skip, the score, clock drop downs, and net tension as well. So if you want your nets to be loose or regular, you can change that. Tight as well. Net shape, you can do rectangle or triangle. Net meshing as well, square, hexagon. They should have like preview photos on the right for this sort of stuff. And then um, there's also different things as well there. Now another thing I usually turn on is handball. A lot of people don't like it because sometimes you get dodgy calls, but I leave it on most of the time. You can um, tinker with that on or off. Referee strictness is a new setting this year as well. So see if you like the strict refs, the very strict refs, or the lenient ones, very lenient. I usually leave it on default at the moment. Now there's also audio settings. So if you don't like the menu sound effects, you can turn that down to zero. Even menu music, you can turn that on or off. If you like the menu music and you use the soundtracks when you play FIFA, make sure you have both of these on because it gives you basically the full soundtrack across all the menus of the game. If you separate these two like on or off, then you'll just get Volta music in Volta and uh, EA Sports music in whatever else is out there in the game. If you leave that on, you'll get the Volta music also in career mode and that. And uh, of course, if you leave that off, you'll just probably get the Volta soundtrack. So tinker around, see what songs you like. And uh, yeah, just leave them both on if you like to listen to the music so you don't lose any songs in the game. Because most people don't really play Volta that long. Now there is commentary languages in the game as well. Obviously my default is English, but if I'm interested in Brazilian Portuguese, you can see you can download that. You just press the square button. And there's also Dutch, French, German, Italian, Spanish, Spanish again. And uh, you can see that there's a bit of variety there. You might want to try out the Spanish commentary when you get sick of Derek Ray's voice. And you can always download that at any time by pressing the square. You can turn the sideline commentary on or off as well. Commentary volume, if you don't want to hear them, you just go down to zero. Uh, critical commentary, you can turn that on or off. And uh, gameplay music for Volta, and that is all there as well. Now, for those people that need it, accessibility stuff is there as well. Color blindness, brightness, you can change, contrast, uh, remap the right stick, you can do that as well. So if you need that stuff, even subtitles, it's in the accessibility section. If you ever want to change the language in the FIFA menus, just go to the settings, go to that tile there, go to game settings, flick the R stick, and change your language to different options there. You can do like Portuguese, uh, Netherlands, Spain, Italian. Um, I'm just going to keep it on English for now, but you can change it there. If you care about privacy online and stuff, go to the online settings section, go to privacy settings, and make sure you turn these off. In-game surveys, usage, sharing, and share playtime. Basically, EA collects data from your console to help develop the products and that. So if you disable that, they're not going to collect your data from your usage. So that's very important if you care about the privacy stuff as well. Now, celebrations and skill moves are a big part of the gameplay experience. If you don't know what buttons to press to trigger certain celebrations and stuff, go to this tile there in the customized settings. You can see all the skill moves there and what buttons to press. So this will help a lot of people out. Um, three star moves, four star moves, it's all there. EA basically gives you like this manual. For the celebrations, it works the same way as well. If you want to trigger certain celebrations and you don't know what to press, then just go to the menu thing and check them out using the manual here that EA gives you. Now when you play FIFA 23, you might have the training center enabled by accident or it might just come up you know, automatically for you. It can be a little bit annoying, especially when you're playing the games. If you take a look here, it comes up on the top right. There's like focus areas. And every time you pass the ball, it says nice pass. Basically, it treats you like a beginner, even though you might have been playing FIFA for the last 20 years. So I found this very, very annoying. And luckily, you can turn it off. Obviously, you want to turn off the trainer settings as well. Just hide all that stuff. But there's also another thing you need to turn off here in the game settings. It's called the training center. And you just turn that off and it should disappear. So if we go back here, 
yeah, it's gone. So that's something you need to know as well because it was very, very annoying. Another thing you should do before you even start playing the game is practice the free kicks in the practice arena. Go to the quick play modes, go to the practice arena, and you know you can pick your guy as well if you want to practice free kicks with a certain player. But basically you can do free kick practice now properly in the game. And you're going to need to because EA did change the mechanics for it. So this is something you need to practice because the mechanics, I don't know, I'm still not a fan. I've only scored one free kick in about a month. 